In this Electronics and More video, I'm going to show you how you can make a remote controlled model rocket launcher. This is the unit you're looking at right here. Instead of having to run wires, you can now remotely launch your model rocket. Now this has a couple of uses. You can either take a model rocket igniter. Now I make my own. This is one right here that I made. There's a couple of different ways to make these. I do have a video showing one way to make them and you can check that out right over here by clicking on the circle with the eye and you'll see it in the drop down menu. This one here is nothing more than a match that I pulverized, added just a little bit of water to make it into a paste and then I dipped the end of the resistive wire into that mixture and allowed it to dry. Now the resistor is a 3 meg resistor in this case and the only purpose is to support the igniter. This part here where my finger's pointing, that's going to glow, and these leads will not glow. These leads will connect to the alligator clips. You can also use this unit if you're into pyrotechnics and you do not want to get too close if you're going to be lighting something off. You can have a fuse. We'll make believe this wire is a fuse. Take some thin resistive wire, like right here, and you would wrap it around the fuse maybe three or four times, eh, five. And once you have those ends, you can see it's wrapped around. Trim this off, one alligator clip there, and the other on the opposite side. Once the button is pushed on the remote, 12 volts DC is going to be supplied to this resistive wire, which is going to cause that wire to glow and ignite the fuse. Very useful device, and now I'm gonna show you how you can make one. Now for this project, you're going to need the following things. I have three feet of wire here, and I think it's around 18 gauge, but you can get by just fine using 20 gauge wire. You're going to need an alligator clip on each end, black for the negative and red for the positive. Also required is this mini transmitter. Now these are very inexpensive. They operate at 315 megahertz AM amplitude modulation and you can expect a range on this of around 100 feet. There are four outputs as you can see here push A, B, C or D and you're going to have four outputs on this board which is the receiver board. The far right pin right over here is ground which is battery negative. Second pin is the 5 volt power supply then the third, fourth, fifth and sixth is going to be the different outputs from this transmitter when you push A, B, C, or D. When you push A, B, C, or D, each one of these pins will go high. So there'll be no voltage at any of these pins. When you push it, the voltage will go high. Keep in mind, in order for this project to work, you cannot drive things directly off these pins because there's simply not enough current coming off the board. So we're going to be taking the output we're going to be amplifying that current using an NPN transistor. This NPN transistor right here is a TO92 package and it is a 2N4401. This is a single pole double throw switch. You can use just a single pole single throw. I had this one laying around. Quarter watt resistors, 4.7K in series with this yellow power indicating LED. This is a 1N4003 rectifier diode, 1 amp. This right here is a 5 volt, 1 watt Zener diode. Over here is a 200 ohm quarter watt resistor. That's going to be used for our Zener voltage regulator circuit. Because we're going to have a 12 volt output on these clips, we need to make sure that the voltage being supplied to this board is kept at a steady 5 volts. And that is where the 5 volt Zener and 200 ohm quarter watt resistor will come into play. Now over here we have a 10K quarter watt resistor. This relay is a single pole single throw. You notice it's got a common and one terminal that's normally open when power is applied to the pin here and pin there which is the relay coil. This pin and this pin will have continuity. Project box, you can use any project box. This one here is a 2 inch 
two and a half by five. I picked it up at Radio Shack. And you do not have to use 12 volts like I'm using here. I just want to have a really strong power supply. You can make this a lot smaller, the project box, if you only use six volts and use rechargeable batteries. You're going to need an eight AA holder, like you see here. And I got these batteries, they're alkalines at the dollar store, four for a dollar, so two bucks worth of batteries. Let me go over the schematic and show you exactly how this is going to have to be set up. Now the transistors you can use could be any of these shown right here, as long as it's an NPN. Over here is the pinout, showing the emitter, the base, and the collector. Right over here is the receiver board, and you can see the five volt pin is the second one, ground is the first one, and this points to each one of the four outputs, one, two, three, four. We're only going to be using one of them. Over here is the 12 volt battery pack, positive, negative. We have the switch right after the battery, and then you have a 200 ohm resistor going this way to connect to the cathode of a 5 volt Zener diode. The other side, the anode, goes to battery negative, which is right here, ground. So all of these go to battery negative. The 200 ohm resistor limits the current. From there, it goes all the way in to the 5 volt supply. Ground goes all the way over to battery negative. You're going to take battery negative, go all the way around, and that's going to be the black alligator clip connected to the wires leaving the box. When the switch is on, you're also going to have power flowing into the anode of the yellow LED. You could use whatever color you like. I have a 4.7K current limiting resistor, and that goes to battery negative. When that switch is turned on, you're going to have 12 volts going all the way around into the relay coil right over here. This is a 12 volt. The one I use is a single pole single throw, but the common ones are single pole double throw. So you have the common and you have a normally open and normally closed. In parallel with that relay coil, you're going to make sure you have a 1N4003. And the purpose of that is when you turn off power to the circuit and to this relay, when the magnetic field of this relay coil collapses, you don't want to have any back EMF spikes destroying this transistor. You're going to take off of this positive 12 volts coming in. It's going to go to the common terminal of the relay. This right here is the normally closed. That's the normally open. Take that one here, and that is your positive leaving. Once this circuit triggers, the current's going to flow through the 10K resistor into the base of the NPN transistor, emitter to ground. That's the first leg to ground. Collector's here. That's the one over here on the right. And the collector's going to go into the other side of the relay coil. Does not get much simpler than that. Once this is triggered, you're going to have that output go high. It's going to turn on this transistor. It's going to amplify the current powering this relay. The contacts are going to close. And then you're going to have full 12 volts at the red and black alligator clip. You'll be able to take that model rocket igniter. It will instantly fire right up. You can use it to ignite a project that you're working on that you don't want to get too close. If you have a YouTube channel and you want to film things and you find it too dangerous to be right up next to it to light something. Or you can also take this output and have it connected to a 12 volt solenoid and have something released. So you could have it spring loaded with a solenoid and once it triggers it'll let the object drop. Okay let's put this together.
this is the finished product. The unit all ready to go. On off switch, power indicator LED. Now there is one thing that I did do. I took the remote control and the range on this remote control is probably around 100 feet before I made the modification. What I did is I took the existing 8th wave antenna which is right over here from this point to the soldered point right here. So it's around 4 and 3 eighths of an inch long and I extended it by another 4 and 3 eighths so it goes from here to the bottom of the board. And the reason for that was to increase the range on the transmitter. The existing antenna was an eighth wave, and by doubling it, it is now a quarter wave. All I had to do was pick up a brass tube at the hobby shop. I sanded down the chrome finish on the antenna to expose the brass right here, slid it in about a quarter of an inch, I soldered it together. You could take a look right here, and you could see a little better in these images exactly what I did. first thing I'm going to do is a very simple test. I'm going to hook up a 12 volt test light right here, hold the remote control, push letter B, and then you'll see it turn on and off. Remember this is momentary. It only stays on as long as you hold the button down. If you wanted this to stay on when you push the button, you go like that and let go, then you would have to use a latching relay inside the unit. I prefer momentary use. The receiver is positioned way down over there. We're going to push the button on the remote and you'll see the light come on. Here we go. And that's pretty far away right there. So if you're doing any testing, you really shouldn't have to be further than that to do your testing. Now let me switch to something else and we're going to repeat the test. I have four wraps very tightly around the sparkler of 34 gauge resistive wire. When I push the button, the wire should glow and ignite the sparkler. Okay, let's see if the sparkler lights right up. And you can see it ignited already. And here's the same thing at a close range. See how fast that was? It was pretty much instantaneous. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please rate it a thumbs up, subscribe, and post links to this video on other websites and blogs. Also be sure to check out my video playlist as well. Thank you very much for watching.